everyone, Feedy Hero here, and welcome to today's build that I have shown. Today we'll be going over a fantastic build for those that can help but keep dying out in the field. And it's best to do is for those that are heading into endgame and don't have a great world armor stats at the moment for modes such as PvP, the Menagerie, Gambit, Strikes, and the Raid to a degree. This build I have for show won't be for everyone, and it's really best for the new light players who are still getting used to the game. But in most players' hands who are looking for a warlock build for just messing about with, while having constant healing and overshields at your disposal, then this build may interest you. Well, I hope it does. Within the set, we will be using the Tournament of Sky subclass, a cast iron armlets, Red Death, Monte Carlo, and Bulwark for an aggressive vampiric healing build, just what the doctor ordered. So the subclass Tournament of the Sky is a choice we'll be working with for the set. The subclass has just recently received a buff update on some of his perks, and now is quite popular with a lot of PvP players for his strengths and versatility it offers. Two perks that have just been updated in the dream is Heat Rises perk, which allows players to consume the grenade to increase glide time and inner accuracy, which if you like sniper rifles and you're really great with aiming with them, then this perk here will be just for you. Or if you're someone that just wants to have a way of getting out of difficult situations, this is also a great perk to use. We then have Celestial Fire now, which basically allows you to shoot out 3 mini spiral flames at your target, which do around 35 damage each, which will equal 105 in total. Now this tree perk is pretty interesting as it is basically a ranged melee, and works well on any other warlock assorted gauntlets that will allow it, such as Winter's Gill and Carsign Amulet Gauntlets. In our case here, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to combine Carsign Armlets and this mini perk to create a ranged mini perk that can actively heal, regenerate us, and also provide a constant regeneration boost for a few seconds. And this can work well when paired with a quick fire weapon, so that we can weaken at distance and then melee to get the kill and reap the rewards, and honestly it's quite beautiful. Using these combos and making full use of Wing Sun, Heat Rises and Icarus Dash can basically allow you to rain terror onto PvP players who aren't used to you, and I can say it does work, but not against everyone. For the weapons, your secondary should be a SMG or a sidearm, something that you can pull out in case your primary fails on you, or if you wish to weaken someone that you know is just a few mini hits away. I also recommend you have a secondary that has a good reload speed, as you will be in situations where you can't switch out to your primary again until the fight finishes. Now for the primaries, they can be based around two weapons. Firstly, you can pick the Red Death for constant healing while on the go, and when paired with the Karzai Amulets, will turn you into a walking aggressive healing train that can dish the damage out while not worrying about death, well, at times. Or, you can pick the Monte Carlo so that you can focus on using your millies as many times as you wish, while also having a decent fire in AR, which you can use to weaken, maybe let's say distance, activate Karzai's ability, and rinse and repeat. Whichever one you pick depends on what you're after and what you want to use the weapon for the most. For example, the Red Death for this build is great to use in PvP, as there will be a lot of fights and engagements where you won't survive most encounters, and this can very much help you in terms of closing in close to mid-range fights. With the Red Death equipped, you can play a bit more aggressive than normal, as you have two, or three if you're using the Healing Rift, three methods of healing at your disposal, and this means your uptime in fights are increased as you're surviving more often, and you're more prepared to take on groups of players that may push onto you. Now throw in a sidearm or SMG to pretty much back you up in case your primary fails, and you pretty much will be able to dominate in your field. This also means if you wish, you can reduce your recovery down to around 30, if you feel that you're confident you'll win most of your fights. And then place your stats in other areas, but do play around with this first, because having a recovery stat of down to around 30 is risky. Resilience wise, yeah, that's that's pretty fine. Recovery wise, it might leave you in a very dangerous situation, but this really depends on what type of playstyle you have. With the Monte Carlo now, you will need to adjust your strength stat as you will be getting a million energy back upon kills or damaging others. Now for this build here, this one will focus more on the one with combo of the weapon and melee in general, and probably fits more at home when using this in PvE environments, as PvE targets are a lot more easier to hit weaken and trigger our melee ability, but it also gives you a bigger chance to fully make use of the build in tough situations. Now you can use this in PvP as well, and it works well on small maps like Javelin or Rusted Lands, 
anything with tight corridors or tight terrain that you can make full use of. But what will make this build deadly in PvP is the mark of chain you get from getting killed in Monte Carlo, or just getting a midi kill to then proc the mark of chain on the Monte Carlo. So let's recap. You midi a target, you activate your exotic ability for health regen, you also get a auto load your Monte Carlo, and then you get a damage buff times 5 off the bat. This sounds nuts when you think about it. Even when you pick will still do good in both contents, it's just you need to go around your playstyle and be aware of your own limitations first. For stats, we come with a very high strength stat at 70, so that we can passively regenerate our melee at a quick uh, cooldown. But this should only be at this level if you're using the Red Death and not Monte Carlo, as the Monte Carlo will replenish your melee while firing from it, and like the Red Death, which will replenish your health but not your melee over time. You can see where I'm going with this. If you choose Red Death, as you want to have active healing while moving and shooting, then pick and prove on the strength stat, so you can make full use of your castle and gauntlets. However, if you choose the Monte Carlo, then focus your stats in other areas that will benefit you the most, like mobility or recovery or resilience, etc. It's all down to you. All your other stats now are what I've gotten with when playing with the Red Death and in general in this build but can and will change depending on if I use the Monte Carlo instead, and then attributes my stats elsewhere. For armor, Karlstein amulets are a must, as without them we can't really make this build work, unless you're happy with just using the Red Death for heals. All of the other armor is shown off for covering your stats and fitting in the appropriate mods, so what you get on your screen may not be the same as what you got overall, but as long as you have the main components, then that's completely fine. So for the following mods attached to my gear are as shown, Head, Strength and Hand Cannon Targeting mod, Arm, Strength and Light Arms Loader mod, Chest, Resilience and Unflinching SMG and Molten Overload mod, Leg, Strength, SMG Dexterity and Special Ammo Scavenger mod, Bond, Bulwark Finisher and Distribution mod. Now with everything covered, what can we generally do? Now from the game clip you can see two outcomes from choosing Red Death or Monte Carlo. With Red Death, I'm constantly running and gunning as I make my way around all the enemies I encounter, and every enemy I kill using my Red Death for example, will instant heal me there and then. Or, if I'm using my secondary and weaken another target, I can use my gauntlets to also proc instant health regen, which will persist for a few seconds, and then after, this does also stack on top of Red Death's instant regen as well. So you're basically getting instant health upon instant health, instant regen over instant regen. With this being the case, I can simply throw myself into the much higher contents without fear of dying so quickly because of low resilience and recovery, which for many players who haven't yet complete Flawless Sundial or Menagerie, then this can come in handy, but you're still going to die if you get too cocky and reckless, so do remember that, you're not invincible. With the Monte Carlo now, I can do the very same thing, but more. I can regen health, get a damage buff times 5 via melee, auto load my weapon, and basically have a great time in hell where no one can stop me. It's as if instead of me being limited to a few things with the build, the game just feels really sorry for me and basically gives me a load of boost to keep me going, as if I'm some kind of pumped up superhero. Well, that's how I like to think about it. I've also added in an extra layer of protection via the Bulwark mod, which upon finishing a target with a finisher, you will get a 15 second overshield provided, but at 1 4th of your super, which is a fair shout as you will easily make this back up in the meantime from playing. Now, also add in your rift now which can also provide an overshield but only while staying in it and you'll pretty much tank whatever is thrown at you. It's as if you've got a mini well of radiance going which is pretty insane on itself. Now that's just for the PvE side of things, for PvP you could do the same thing, but Bulwark becomes useless as you can't pull off finishers to activate overshields. However, this doesn't ruin the build as it still works amazingly in PvP. Depending on what you want to use, you can use a Red Death and combo with Cast and Gloves for a high regen run and gun, or Monte Carlo and Gloves for instant mini regeneration with some amazing healing benefits and damage. It's all down to you at the end of the day. Now for the downsides for the build, I can't really say there's any surprisingly, which is shocking as I tend to have a vast number of builds with pros and cons to them, but this one here just doesn't have any that I can logically think of. Which is great, I don't mean to be sarcastic or anything like that, but it's just a great thing that we don't have any kind of disadvantages to build, as it basically means it's a lot more easier for someone that is new 
to pick it up and just, you know, have fun with it. But, except from that, that's to be it, to be honest. Now, if you have everything that I've currently shown, you now have a Warlock build which will allow you to zap the life out of everything and everyone you face, which will reward you with a high health regen and overshield. And while your teammates are dying in the higher tier content, you'll be the final one laughing. So have fun, and modify the build to your liking. So if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means leave a like and also sub. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is always down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.